Let's look at some important properties of continuous functions. First, if we have two functions f and g that are continuous at the point A, then their sum, difference, constant multiples, product and quotient are all continuous at the point A. For the last one, the quotient, we need to make sure that we do not divide by zero. So the denominator mustn't vanish at uh, A. G of A must be not zero. But other than that, this result holds and uh, we can show it by using nothing but the definition of continuity and limit laws. There are lots of continuous functions. They include all polynomials in X, all algebraic functions, functions given by algebraic expressions, trigonometric functions, hyperbolic functions, exponential functions, and all of the, the inverses of these uh, functions that we listed. So this is already a long list of continuous functions. These are all continuous wherever they are defined, so at, at every point in their domain. But we can create even more uh, continuous functions out of these by combining these, taking their composition. This is guaranteed by this result. So if we have a function g that is continuous at a point a, and another function f that is continuous at g of a, then their composition f of g of x, uh, which is a function in x, is continuous at the point x equals a. With this construction, we get a huge class of continuous functions. Uh, this class of functions is called the class of elementary functions, the set of elementary functions. And now we just discussed how every elementary function is continuous at every point where they are defined. Finally, functions that are continuous on a closed interval, they have some very nice properties. So let me just emphasize that this interval here, AB, includes its endpoints, A and B. So it's a closed interval. Okay, so if F is continuous on a closed interval, then it has some really nice properties, as I said. First of all, it's bounded. It has some definite lower and upper bounds for its values. It assumes its minimum and maximum values. So this is a result known as the extreme value theorem. And not just the minimum and maximum values is being attained by this function, but every value in between the minimum and maximum value also is being taken. Uh, a result known as the intermediate value theorem. We will cover these in separate videos, but now it's time for some problem solving. Is it true or false that f of x equals x squared plus 1 over x minus 2 is continuous at x equals 2? So pause the video and select your answer. It's false. The function is not defined at x equals 2 because you, we would be dividing by 0 there. So uh, this is a necessary, necessary condition for continuity. Next question. Well, how about um, f of x equals x plus 1 divided by x squared minus 1? Is it con plus the natural log of x? Is it continuous at x equals a half? So pause the video and select your answer. Hope you paused it and have selected uh, true in this case. It is continuous at x equals a half. The natural log is defined for all positive um, x. And here the denominator only excludes the numbers plus or minus 1. So we have to look at positive numbers except for plus 1 um, for the domain. And uh, then x equals a half in, is, in, is in the domain of this elementary function. Hence it's continuous there. Next, suppose that we know that the limit as x approaches 1 of g of x is a half and f of x is defined as 1 over x plus 1. What's the limit as x approaches 1 of f of g of x? Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and realized that you can evaluate this limit by looking at this function f of x that is continuous at x equals a half and that is exactly the limit of g of x as x approaches 1. So we can evaluate the limit by simply evaluating f at uh, x equals a half to get the reciprocal of half plus one so that's two plus one uh, equals three next suppose that the limit as x approaches five of g of x is negative one and f of x is now one over x plus one what's the limit as x approaches five of f of g of x pause the video and input your answer in the box so the limit does not exist in, the, in this case and this is because f is not defined at x equals negative one which is exactly the, the, the limit of uh, g as x approaches five Okay, use continuity to evaluate the following limit. x approaches 3 of x minus 1 multiplied by the square root of 25 minus x squared. Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Okay, I hope you paused it and have inputted 8. So this is an elementary function uh, whose domain includes, has the number 3 in, in it. So we can evaluate the limit by direct substitution to get 2 times 4 equals 8. 
Last question, suppose that f and g are continuous functions such that g of 3 equals 5 and the limit as x approaches 3 of x times f of x plus f of x times g of x equals 16. What is the value f of 3 then? Pause the video and input your answer in the box. Hope you paused it and have input it too. So you can obtain this value by using the limit laws and continuity of these functions to get on the left hand side, break, break it up and to get uh, 3 times f of 3 plus f of 3 times 5, so that's 8 times f of 3 equals 16, dividing by 8, you get f of 3 equals 16 over 8 equals 2. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.